Hello everyone, I'm Si Hang, a PhD student from Campus Center for Information Security. This presentation is about a multi-party cardinality test for threshold private site intersection, joint work with Pedro Branco and Nico Dritley. Here's a brief overview of this talk. I'm going to start with the background and motivation of private site intersection. Next, I will show our results in this work and relations with uh, concrete work. Then I will show the challenge we met and our approach to get around it. At the end, I finish the talk with a short summary. Let me briefly explain what is a private set intersection. As an example, say there are two companies denoted as Alice and Bob, respectively, holding their own customers' contacts, denoted as SA and SB. They would like to know who are their common customers so they can cooperate with each other without leaking other own customers' information. So basically, they require a protocol allowing each party to learn the intersection and nothing else. This is called private set intersection, or PSI. Today, we are more interested in a special setting of standard PSI called threshold PSI, which means parties only learn the intersection when it is larger than some threshold. Otherwise, they learn nothing. Here is a great example for threshold PSI that is route sharing. Suppose there are two people who would like to go to different destinations and they want to share a ride from Uber. So they need to know which path is common for both. But they don't want to leak their own unique secret route. Basically, they require a following protocol to achieve the goal. If two paths are intersected substantially, they learn the shared path and could agree on route sharing. However, if two paths are barely intersected, they learn nothing instead and might deny the route sharing. So here, here are related works for um, threshold PSI. Ghosh and Sinking in crypto 2019 gives a first two-party threshold PSI protocol, which communication only depends on the threshold instead of the set size. I will briefly explain the scheme later. So generally, in high level, their protocol can be divided into two phases or two parts. Uh, the first part is a cardinality test step. The second one is an intersection computation step. The second part can be extended extended to multi-party easily, so we, we only focus on the first step in this talk. That is um, a cardinality test for multi-party. Now I show our main results. Our main result is a multi-party cardinality test which allows M parties to check if the intersection is larger than n minus t for some threshold p. Here, uh, big N is a uh, number of parties, and small n is a set of size, and t is substantially smaller than n and small n. Our approach only requires threshold additively homomorphic encryption instead of a fully homomorphic one. Thus, we only rely on weaker assumptions such as DDH or DCR. And we achieve a T square communication complexity for each party. Actually, there's a concurrent work, BMRR24, of ours, also consider the same problem in multi party setting, but they focus on a slightly different variant which, comp which uh, complements ours. Specifically, they focus on the case which allows parties to learn, to learn the intersection if and only if the difference between the union and the intersection is smaller than t. 
whereas ours is to learn it if and only if the intersection is larger than a minus t. Now let's move to the technical part. First, we call the two-party protocol from GS19. Suppose two parties, Alice and Bob, holding a set as A and as B, of size n respectively. Without losing generality, we assume both sets are of the same size. So the problem is, they want to know the in, they want to know the intersection, if and only if the set difference is smaller than some threshold t, where t is much smaller than n. The main observation of them is the set reconciliation techniques introduced by Minsky can be leveraged in this case. That is, each party encode, uh, encodes their own set as a polynomial like this. So for each element a j from s, where s is their own set. The polynomial is the product of all the terms of x minus a j. Now two parties, Alice and Bob, have two polynomials, p a and p b, by encoding their sets. If we compute p a over p b, then the common factors of two polynomials which are corresponding to the intersection are cancelled out. Finally, it's only a rational function left, the low degree. Um, the low degree rational function means uh, its numerator and its denominator are of low, of low degree polynomials. Here it means PA minus B and PB minus A are two uh, T degree polynomials, where T is a threshold. Therefore, uh, both parties can just uh, can firstly compute all of the t evaluation points of the rational function uh, p a over p b. Uh, then one party say a uh, bob can recover the denominator via interpolation, which uh, which will review intersection uh, when compared to his own set. Of course, Bob should not learn the the, the numerator. P A minus B, otherwise the security is compromised. And Bob, we also learn the whole set of Alice, which is forbidden. In GS19, they use um, oblivious linear evaluation or OLE to mask the numerator with a random polynomial to hide the information. So far, we only discuss the second part, which is. Um, how to compute the intersection? It can be it can be it, it can only be, be proved um, when the intersection size is larger than n minus t. Otherwise, the proof of security will fail. That's why they still require um, a cardinality test to make sure when they compute the inter when they compute the intersection its size or its cardinality is large enough. Still, let's first consider the two-party cardinality test in GS19. They encode um, set elements into the exponents, say for each element aj or ai, ai sorry. They encode the set as a polynomial qx equals to sum of all of x to ai. Uh, then um, they securely check if the difference of the two polynomials um, qa and qa minus qb is a sparse polynomial. Sparse polynomial means the polynomial has much few terms compared to its degree. Here, um, any of qx um, might be a polynomial with exponentially large degree, whereas it only has t terms or t, mono t monomials. Of course, here we need some secure computation to do a private check. Finally, if the resulting polynomial is sparse, we conclude that the set difference is small, which passes the cardinality test. Otherwise, it doesn't pass the test, and both parties will just abort the protocol. However, if we were to directly extend the approach to multi-party setting, we would let n parties compute n minus one times q one x minus q two x to uh, q n x. This is a sparse polynomial only if n times
times t is small because the resulting polynomial has n times t terms. If the intersection cardinality is t, thus um, the communication codes for each party will depend on the number of parties n, which is highly undesired. We need to seek for other solutions. For simplicity, let's first consider the insecure way of our approach to do cardinality test. We use the original encoding set C for uh, an n size set. We encode, it as, we, we, we encode it as a integral polynomial. Then suppose there are n sets from S1, S2 to Sn. We encode them as PS1 to PSn. And if we compute the, the uh, rational function PS1 plus PS2 plus 2 um, PSn over PS1, after cancelling, after cancelling out common factors, the resulting rational function has degree t at most if the intersection cardinality is larger than n minus t. This actually helps us to get rid of the number of the parties n in the computation. Therefore, the cardinality test boils down to the following problem. Given a rational function f of x equals to p1 of x over p2 of x, can we decide if degree of p1 or degree of p2 is smaller than t with only t evalu evaluation points of f of x? We give an affirmative answer in this work. Our crucial observation is that if we interpret f of x equals to um, p1 of x over p2 of x, where um, f of x is some unknown reduced rational function, which means p1 of x and p2 of x are co-prime, they don't share any common factors. So um, if we interpret this f of x on two different support sets, say v and w, so each one of size o of t, we will get two different interpreted functions, fv and fw respectively. Then we would have if degree of p1 equals to degree of p2 smaller than some threshold t, our um, interpreted functions fv equals to fw. Otherwise, if the degree is larger than t, then these uh, two interpreted functions are different. Say fv, fv will not equal to fw except with a negligible probability over the uniform choice of vi and wi. Moreover, interpreting a rational function can be reduced to solving a linear system of equations by um, extending secure linear algebra tools developed by KM, KMWF07 to multi-party case. We can perform the degree test revealing nothing else than output. Note uh, that we, we also need to randomize numerators of the rational function, which is not for security, but for the correctness. We prove our security. Uh, we prove the security of our protocol in in ex externalized UC framework. The standard UC framework has um, a subtle issue that uh, the imp because the inputs of our sub-protocols are encrypted under a public key, which, uh, which needs to come from somewhere in the UC setting. So it's, it's some kind of a definition, def def definitional problem. Um, so this is also mentioned in the, in the concurrent work BMR21. And they get around this by by only proving the final protocol instead of the sub protocols, we, we, we choose to we choose to prove the security in a generalized UC framework, externalized UC framework, which has a global setup uh, of, of public key in infrastructure. So we can get around this sub issue. To make a short summary. We develop a multi-party cardinality test for threshold PSI 
uh, with communication only depends on the threshold for each party without relying on the number of parties n and uh, our our construction is built up it uh, it only relies on additional homomorphic encryption uh, which is much weaker than uh, fully homomorphic ones so we don't require uh, let us say assumptions that's all thanks for your attention